For this week's image, I wanted to take a good look at the editing process for one of Sarah's colour photographs, both in Lightroom and also in Photoshop. To give you a little bit of background about this picture, we were both shooting in Blackpool and it was a warm day back in the summer. There were a lot of people in the sea. Now, if you've ever been on one of our workshops or if you've ever had the chance to shoot with Sarah, you will know that she loves to shoot along the shoreline. I was filming some B-roll for this particular day and I fortunately caught her as she was taking this particular photograph. Now I've been shooting with Sarah for nearly a decade now. I'm always astounded by the way she's able to move amongst people so easily. Nobody ever really takes any notice of her. And you can see in this video that nobody's really interested in what she's doing. She isn't drawing attention to herself or to what she's shooting. And with the 28 mm lens, she really needs to be close to the subject to fill the frame effectively. And you can see in the video how close she is to her subject. Now I adore this picture, I love this picture. I love the way she's caught the main subject with the scarf. I love the way that the subject sits in the frame on the third and also the way she's able to put the subject into the scene with the kids playing in the sea and the pier behind her. And you know, the whole sort of story of what's going on here is captured in this one photograph. Now shooting with colour has given the picture a lot of depth. Overall the scene itself is quite monochromatic, there's not a lot of colour in it, but that scarf, that little accent of colour and the way it sits in the composition really helps to hold the eye into the frame. Now some of you will no doubt be wondering why I'm doing the narration for this week's image when it's not my image, it's Sarah's. That's down to this little chap who came into our lives three weeks ago. This is Xander and he's an 11 week old Doberman puppy. And as you can imagine, he's a full time job. And at the moment Sarah is really busy looking after him, doing his training and socialization. So she's left it for me to do the narration on this one for her. I'm going to edit this photograph in Lightroom and I'm going to finish it off in Photoshop. The reasons for that I'll explain as I go through the edit. The main thing really is to bring this lady out and to bring the colour of the scarf out and to separate it all from this kind of murky sea in the background here. First thing I'm going to do is correct the horizon. The horizon is quite important so I'm just going to straighten that. Sarah uses a external viewfinder and it is incredibly difficult to keep the horizon straight on an external viewfinder. So in terms of the composition, this lady now fits beautifully on the third of the frame. It just looks cinematic. It looks really nice. I'm going to change the profile from Adobe Color, which is the standard profile applied to M9 cameras. And I'm going to change that to Adobe Vivid. Now, normally I would change it to Adobe Standard, but in this case, I think it's making everything a little bit too flat. If we change it to Adobe Vivid, the saturation is increased and also the contrast is increased. Now that makes my life easier when I come to use the other adjustments in the uh, develop panels here because if I was to change the profile to Adobe Standard for example, the first thing I would have to do is to probably try and get a contrast curve in there to try and make it look okay and then I've used that contrast curve. I haven't got another contrast curve which I can use then. So for me the best thing is to just go straight up here to Adobe Vivid and have the profile build in the contrast that I want to start with. You'll see the white balance is set to daylight. This is because our cameras are set to daylight. And again, I've explained this in the past. Main thing when editing is consistency and I'm afraid auto white balance is not the most consistent thing that's ever been invented. I'm just gonna increase the exposure a little bit. Again, most of our images, particularly on a day like this, where it's very contrasty, they are underexposed and that's completely deliberate. We set the exposure compensation to minus a third or minus two third of a stop. And the reason for that is so that we can hold highlight detail. Now with the M9 cameras and also with the monochrome cameras, if you expose at the base ISO, in this case, Sarah's done that with ISO 160 for the M9, you can underexpose the image by a couple of stops easily and still get a fantastic quality when you increase the exposure in post-production. The first thing I want to do is um, bring this lady out against this background here. So I'm going to use a mask for that. I'm going to use a people mask. I'm not worried that the scarf isn't included in the mask here. I'll deal with that later on anyway. So I'm just going to create an entire person mask. I'm just going to adjust her. So the first thing I want to do is just increase the highlights. And I also want to just drop down the shadows so we have a little bit more contrast on her. Lightroom now has this refined saturation slider. So sometimes when you increase the contrast via the curve, you can also increase the saturation. I don't want to do that particularly. So I'm going to 
drop this refined saturation curve all the way down so that the saturation of the garments here isn't actually affected too much. The next thing I want to do is adjust the shawl here, the scarf. So I'm going to add another mask. I'm going to do an objects mask and I'm just going to paint in that area there. Hopefully it'll give me a good, it does fantastic. We've got this person that's been included here. So let's get rid of that. We'll subtract that with a brush. Let's drop the brush down. Okay, that's fine. So with this shawl, I'm just going to do exactly the same thing. I'm just going to increase the contrast slightly. Okay, and maybe a little bit more. Make it a little bit translucent. So I might just push those shadows up a little bit. There we go. And in this case, because I want a little bit of saturation, I'm not going to do the refined saturation slider here. I'm just going to leave it 100%. And then what I'm going to do then is add that to the other half of the scarf here. So I'm just going to do plus. This is the same mask. I'm going to hit the plus button. I'm going to take a objects brush again, and I'm just going to literally paint that into there. And you can see it automatically does the adjustment for me. Now I've done it. Now that looks great. I'm quite happy with that. Let's zoom back out. Yeah, now she's standing out really nicely. I'm going to add a sky mask now. And I'm going to bring the sky down a little bit. And I'm going to intersect that mask with a linear gradient. Hold the shift key down. Just pull that down so it's nice and graduated. This area here is kind of dark. It's the vignetting of the lens which Sarah uses. Okay, it gives a little bit of character to the images, which is great. But sometimes, particularly with open areas of sky, it can be a little bit too dark. So what I'm going to do is then take another brush. And these brushes, by the way, are applied to my mouse. Uh, so I have a key on my mouse that I press and a brush comes up. That's a really cool way of working. And I'm just going to increase that area there. That's better. Okay, and I'm also going to desaturate that area there a little bit as well. So it's better balanced. Just want to increase the foreground texture here a little bit. So again, I'm going to press my mouse button to bring up the brush. And I can drop the size of the brush down on the fly. Into here. Not too worried if I go over her feet because we can correct that in a second. So I'm going to increase the whites first. And then I'm going to decrease the shadows. Okay, and we get a nice texture coming out there now, which is what we're after. This area here, which we went over a little bit, all we do is go back up to our mask. We hit the subtract button. And we can use a brush again and just paint over that area. So it all blends in quite nicely. And then the other thing I want to do is just bring out the texture in the C a little bit as well. And I can do that with another brush. So again, clicking my mouse button, I'm just going to do a very, very rough brush work around here. I'm not overly concerned too much about it because what I'm going to do now is hit the whites. Okay. And then I'm going to hit the shadows as well. Okay. That's great. And then we're just going to zoom right into hundred percent. The reason why I wasn't that worried in that particular case is because I want it to blend into each other. I don't want halos around things. So it doesn't matter if things spill over into the sky a little bit or into the figure here because I want it to look natural and not have hard edges and halos around each part of the image. Let's zoom out one more time to have a look. You're right, okay, I'm happy with that. Let's take it into Photoshop and I'll, I'll uh, show you how we finish this image off. So here we are in Photoshop and somebody asked me why I feel the need to edit the images in Photoshop, not just leave them as they are finished in Lightroom. And, and there's a couple of reasons for that, particularly with color work. The first thing is that I like to make sure that the image looks correct within the color space, which is going to be used in. In this particular case, this is the sRGB color space. I like to know that what I'm seeing on the screen is what's going to end up when it's printed or put in a magazine or whatever. Uh, Lightroom uses a really big color space, the photo RGB color space, and my monitor and like a lot of monitors can't see that entire color space, but it can see the sRGB color space. So in my own head, it makes sense to me to be able to see all of the colors that are going to be edited within the actual photograph. That's the first reason. The second reason is that Photoshop has much more control over things like brushes, contrast, color, and that kind of thing than Lightroom does. Also as well for me, I've been using Photoshop since the late nineties. I'm very, very familiar with how I want the images to look and I know how to get that look within Photoshop. So let's have a look at this image first of all. And what I'm going to do is zoom in and we'll zoom in again. 
Um, as you can see here, the skin tones are a little bit plasticky, I guess, and that's just down to digital capture and noise reduction, all that kind of stuff. I like my images to look a little bit more film-like and I have an action which I apply to all the color work and the action is called M9 Color and I'll leave a link to that in the description below. Now you can use this on all sorts of digital cameras, but this is kind of optimized for M9s. And I'm just gonna run that action now. And as you can see, immediately we've now got a much more film-like feel to the, the tonal range of the image. That kind of plasticness has gone a little bit. So if I just go back to the beginning, you see we've got this muddiness to the image. And that muddiness now is gone. Now, what I really want to do with this image is separate the shawl, the scarf area from the sea a little bit more, and also make her stand out a little bit more as well. Now, within Photoshop, I tend to use curves a lot, and I use them on layers. So for example, I want to increase the saturation in the shawl a little bit, but I also want to give a little bit more separation of the tones. You see there's some lighter areas in here and it's kind of almost like a mottled pattern and I really want to emphasize that a little bit more. So to do that what I would do is I would make a curves adjustment layer. So I'm just going into adjustment panel, go into curves and I'm just going to first of all add some contrast. So I'm just going to lift the shawl. Now everything else around it in the photograph is going to be affected. So I'm just going to concentrate just on the shawl. I'm just looking at the shawl and not anything else in the photograph. So I'm just going to bring the shadow side down a little bit to add a little bit more contrast, which is good. Okay, that's great. Now, if we go back to our layers panel, we can see now we have a curves adjustment layer. This vibrance layer is left over from the action that I played, so just ignore that. So this layer now comes with a mask, which is this white bit here. And I've got to make sure this mask is clicked on, which it is, it's the little white lines around the outside of it. Now I want to invert that mask, so I'm going to press Command I on my keyboard, and that mask goes black. We're back to where we started from, there's no adjustment. So it's in order to paint that adjustment in, I now need to press B, brush, and then all I need to do is paint. Okay, and as you can see, that adjustment is now painting into the, the scarf, which is fantastic. Now the other great thing about Photoshop is that the brushes can be manipulated in terms of the way that they work, in terms of the angles, and they can also be made fatter and thinner. So if you've got really critical areas like here, where we're going right up to the edge of the dress here, you can change your brush to allow you to do that. You can't do that in Lightroom, and it drives me absolutely up the wall that you can't do that. You're stuck with this stupid round brush. I never use a round brush in Photoshop. It's always something that looks a little bit more torpedo shaped. So I can go to the other side now, and I can go right into the corners here. I can change the way that the brush works, so I can make it a lot more accurate. Okay, and I can keep doing that until I'm happy with what I've got, which is cool. Now the other really cool thing is that if we stay on our layer here and click the little curve icon, that brings up our curve. So if we want to make a further adjustment, make it darker for example we can do that but what's really cool is if we go into our drop down here we can pick up any of these color channels if I pick up the red color channel and go to the highlight area I can adjust the colors of the highlights and as you can see it's actually changing the colors can you see the way that it's actually bringing those spots out now they're making them all red now I don't want it that red obviously but I'd like them to separate a little bit so I'm going to push that area up a little bit so we just get a little bit of red coming through so we've got that nice mottled feel coming back into the scarf and then if I go to the blue channel and come down to the mid-tone area I can actually change how blue that scarf is now I don't want to manipulate the scarf so it's a completely different color I don't want to do that at all all I want to do is just give it a little bit of luminance and that's absolutely fine and if we zoom back out and then if we go to our layers and if we turn the curves on and off, you can see the difference is subtle, but you can see how much more translucent the, the uh, scarf is. And they might think that's an enormous amount of work just to make that one slight adjustment. That's just me. I want it to be right. If that's what it takes, then that's what I'll do. This is all about texture to me. So I want these braids to stand out. So we're going to do exactly the same thing again. 
we're going to go to a curves now you can you don't have to use curves you can use brightness and contrast and levels and all those things but i'm going to use curves because that's what i know i'm going to take the shadow end and i'm going to lift again the whole of the uh the image is going to lift as well but i'm only concentrating on the braids that's all i'm interested in go back to our layers panel and there's our curve with its own mask so i'm going to invert the mask I'm going to take my brush again and I'm going to paint in and we're just going to bring that area out. Now say we make a mistake and go into the C like that. I just press the X on my keyboard and I can paint it back again. It's a really flexible, really cool way of working. It's how I've worked for years and years and years. The sky has gone a little bit deeper blue up here than what it was in Lightroom. Again, this goes back to color spaces and all that kind of stuff. So I just want to address this area here. So I'm going to go again, go to my adjustment layer. I'm going to go to vibrance and I'm just going to take down that blue area a little bit. And that again has created its own layer with its own mask. If I invert the mask, take my brush, make my brush a bit bigger and I can just paint that in. And I still think this area here could do with a little bit more darkening. So again, I'm going to take an adjustment layer. I'm going to go to curves. I'm just going to pull that. I'm just literally going to look at the area at the bottom there. There we go. That's all I want. I can add a little bit of contrast if I want to. Okay. And then I'm just going to go back to my layers here. There's our mask again. I'm just going to invert the mask and brush it in. How cool is that? And of course, here's the advantage of having the different brushes. There we go. Let's have a look at the overall image. That's really good. I probably need a little bit of lightning. So final curve adjustment, go to curves again. Lift a little bit. Okay. And then the final thing I need to do is just take care of these dust areas. So I need to go back to my layers. Click on the background, click on the spot tool. Just get rid of all those. Okay, so that's what we came in at and that's how we finished it.